It's been back here. We are here for podcast 51 of the podcast today. Um, I have a special guest today with me today. Comedian, impressionist, author, radio host, uh, friendly crazy man. <laughs> uh, Joey Voices. What is up, my good friend Be back. Joey? Just pump right here, baby. Okay. Good to see you. Good to Thank see you for having brother. me on your Thank show. You, it's an honor. Appreciate it. And a privilege. Thank you, so let's talk about first off, you know, typical interviews. Where were you born? Where were you from? What was your childhood like? I was born in uh, Melrose, Massachusetts. Thank you very much. <laughs> Joe Elvis Presley there. <laughs> I was born in Melrose and yep. raised in Malden. Malden, Malden. Yeah. What were you like as Way a back in the uh, ancient year of 1972. Oh, that's pretty ancient right there, folks. Yeah, man. That's pretty ancient. Yeah. Long time ago. I'm 47. 47. Wow. Long time ago. <laughs> it's already too late now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me, what were you like as a child? Oh, I was rambunctious. That's what I've heard. Yeah, I was very hyper. I've heard. My nickname was Ricky Ritalin. Ricky Ritalin. <laughs> it was, uh, I know it's probably happy to believe it was very hyper. I was a kid that put snowballs in the freezer and then threw them at like every kid buses. Gee, it became buses. my balls. Like I was that kid. <laughs> no. I was no. a kid that broke everyone's window in the neighborhood. That's what I thinking heard. I wouldn't get caught and everybody knew it was me. Yes. So tell me about. But I grew up you and were, I survived. You did. And I got into a lot of fights when I was a kid. <laughs> so, but so I, I grew out of that. Yes. I became a man. Good man. Um, so let me ask you this question. So when did you first think about, hey, I want to do impressions for a living? When did that kind of... Just a hyperactive kid mimicking the radio. That was it. I just loved music. Music was my thing, and I loved it. It moved me. Yeah. Maybe sad songs made me cry. Yep. Uh, fun songs made me hyper and excited. And yeah. Music has just been the, the uh, nucleus of my entire life. Mm -hmm. Music's a great thing. It's a language in and of itself. Yeah. And uh, everybody loves music. I mean, it's a people, you know, you're not human, right? But of course. some people, it's their identity. Yes. Music is my identity. It's yes. the best way I can put it. And yeah. Without realizing it, I guess I was just trying to sound like the radio. What was coming out of the radio, I was just trying to sound like it. It was a natural thing for me. And, you know, the only voice I could do when I was little, because I had a little kid voice, was Michael Jackson. Yeah, as a kid, right? Yes. Yeah, the only, yeah. was really yeah. the only one here to do a little Michael Jackson? Yeah. Uh, She's out of my life. She's out of my life. Yeah. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. I don't know whether to live or die. Yeah. Nice. That's, nice. That's, good. That's good. And I've learned love's not possession. And I've learned the one way. That's it. That's, that's all I know. That's good. That's, that's, that's all I know. Do I need to do any more? No, I don't, I don't think so. Well, I don't know. We'll see. That's how it goes. So tell me about, <laughs> about your, I heard your, I heard remember they were, you're also a minister kind of also. Well, I got a master's degree in bib, biblical systematic theology from mm -hmm. Axe Seminary in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I went seven years. I was going to be a minister. And uh, it just, at that time, at least, it wasn't my calling. Mm -hmm. And But I finished the schooling because I didn't want to quit. I had quit before. I started in 01, I, I went for, for a couple months, and then I just quit. I didn't really want to do it. So when I went back, I said, I'm not quitting this time. I'm going to finish and see through my education, and God's going to have a plan down the road somewhere for, for, for my, the knowledge and wisdom. And as I get older, we'll see where he leads that, you know. So, I'm a, again, I'm still a rambunctious guy. Yeah. I got a lot of energy. Yep, me too. And, uh, you know, as you get older, you learn to control that energy. Yes. And, uh, but, you know, sometimes – you know, as any guy, I have my moments where I act like I'm five years old. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and you know, my 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 girl Colleen, she says she, I got three kids. I go, what do you mean? She goes, Yeah, I got my two daughters and I got you, the son I never wanted. <laughs> never wanted. <laughs> hey, you get no respect. No respect. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's uh, if, if I didn't have the energy and the and the um, charisma, I guess, yeah, uh, that I have, I wouldn't be able to do the show that I have. Right. I would right. never be able to do it. I'd never be able to stand on stage for 60 to 90 minutes right. and perform all these characters and, and tell stories. And you have to love what you do to, exactly. to, to, to have the energy to do that and expand exactly. yourself. Because yeah. you're giving your emotions, you're giving your heart, you're giving your mind, you're giving all of yourself to the audience. And my father used to tell me when I was a kid, keep singing. Yep. See, my father was 35 years older than me. I was the youngest of eight. And my father said, you keep singing, Ace. Call me Ace. I said, okay, he says, he says, when you sing, you put smiles on people's hearts, and you can't put a price tag on putting a smile on somebody's heart. And then I'd start singing. He goes, no, not right now. <laughs> wait, wait till I leave. <laughs> but he was the best. And if it wasn't my dad, you know, encouraging that, you know, I, I always believed in myself because of my father. Yeah. But um, that's it. I mean, it's, 
that's where I came from, Malden, Mass. Yep. Malden, you know those Mass. of you down here in uh, China, or you ever hear of uh, Malden, Mass? China. <laughs> and, um, but China. you know, I, I, I end up finishing seminary to finish your, my answer to your question. Yes. And I um, started studying quantum physics, mm. quantum entanglement, law of attraction, and oh, saw nice. the parallels between the principles that Jesus taught and what the law of attraction taught. And I says, there's something here. I, I, I just kept bringing back the teachings of Jesus. The things that I was learning in the law of attraction. So I started studying this. This can't be the exact same thing. There's got to be a dichotomy, a line between what the law of attraction is and what it is not. Mm-hmm. And in my new book, Good Things Are Supposed to Happen to You, I'm holding it up, Brian. Oh, great. Okay. Um, I talk about what the law of attraction is and what it isn't. Mm-hmm. And and good things are supposed to happen. Do you believe that? Of course. Of course I, you believe well, that. So I want to ask you this question. Um, <clears throat> Tell everybody, our viewers, how me and you became friends because a lot of people don't know that. We became friends through your dad. Yes. Because your dad went to school with my brother Brian. Yep. And uh, I was performing uh, a couple of times, and you just showed up, man. Yeah. I said, this kid's beautiful. He just shows up. Yeah. Hey, can I get on stage and perform? And I said, come on up, man. Yeah. So I bring him up, and he's doing impressions. I put my Joe Cocker wig on him. Yeah. He's doing the Joe Cocker, and the audience loved him. Yeah. So whenever he's around and I'm, I'm performing, I always bring him up for a cameo appearance because you know he's interviewing all these celebrities yeah but he's really the celebrity because they're coming on his show yeah it's like he's like the modern day johnny carson mm. right? he's like you know hey, hey. Yeah, i might be gonna do it i appreciate oh no no johnny carson you gotta talk johnny he's how it is johnny so it's kind of like this johnny carson it's kind of like I, I i had no idea i wish i was unaware of brian mccauley oh yeah i wish i wish aka karnak the magnificent yes then the question says, what do you say to the podcaster that comes on the air? <laughs> Hello, how are you? That's what you say. Kind of Mac the Magnificent. Yeah. So tell me. Carnac the Magnificent. Yes. yes. So tell me about your, your book. My book. Yes. All right. My book. I wrote this book because yes. I wanted to share the knowledge that I had. I realized that in today's world, yeah. too many people believe they're cursed. Mm. They believe that they have no luck. If they didn't have bad luck, they have no luck at all. I believe that bad things are supposed to happen to them because they watch too much news yeah. and they're paying attention to all the wrong things. Your life experience is what you choose to focus on. Yep. So if you're focusing on only positive things yeah. and you make a habit of it, yeah. then mostly positive things are going to happen to you because that's your life experience. That's what you're moving toward. And that's what you're drawing toward you into your orbit. orbit. It's called the law of attraction, the law of polarity, the law of magnetism. Right? Yes. So if you focus on negativity, then all you're going to attract into your experience is negative people, negative circumstances, and negative thoughts, and negative, which create negative feelings. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So your thoughts are like seeds. Yeah. So when you think a thought, that thought wave, which is measured by scientists, leaves your being, your energy signature, yes. and plants itself into the soil of the atmosphere around you. Yeah. Every seed you plant has a harvest. Yeah. You know that from the seeds in the earth. Yeah. All right. So if you put positive thoughts out there, does it mean that only positive things are going to happen to you? No. Yeah. Of course, there's going to be some things in yeah. life that you're not going to like. You're not going to like that are bad, but mostly, for the most part, yeah. you're going to reap a, a bountiful harvest. Now, listen, even the most bountiful harvest has some weeds in it. Yeah. So, but you're getting mostly bountiful fruit, corn, cucumbers, whatever it may be. Yeah. Mostly you're getting that. So that teaches you that if you put mostly positive thoughts out there on purpose, yeah. then you're planting those seeds into the soil of the atmosphere. It's a really, really good metaphor yeah. to really consider when you when you think when you're thinking when you're thinking thoughts that may be influenced by negative outside circumstances. Yeah. So someone comes into your life and they're having a bad day and they take it out on you. Yeah. Now that can very easily set you on a negative trajectory. Who does he think he is and it's bothering you all day? Yeah. And all you're thinking about are negative thoughts about that moment you had. Yeah. But if you let that continue, it becomes a state of being. Yeah. And if you let it continue even longer, I mean, for a long period of time, like months, it becomes a personality trait. Wow. And that's very hard to change, but it can be changed. It can be changed. Um, this yeah. book is wonderful about how to change that. Yeah. Uh, it's how to reprogram your mind to work for you and not against you. It's a wonderful book, and WBZ recognizes book. 
um, on the WBZ Book Club last week or two weeks ago. So. We're back now. Sorry about that. So, Joy, we're saying about, about your book review. You were yeah, excellent. yeah, absolutely. So that that was. Uh, so I want to just pick up where I left off. Yes. The um, uh, the book review. Jordan Rich did the in uh, the um, the review of it. It was a yes. one minute review, and, and it ran on WBZ all week a couple yeah. of weeks ago and, and on yes. the weekend. And uh, it's a WBZ book club, and it was the very first accolade that I received for this book, and I'm very grateful for that. And and Jordan Rich has agreed to uh, do the uh, narration of the audio version of this book. Mm. So he's a wonderful guy, and his voice is very easy to listen to. And uh, I'm going to give you that copy. Oh, I'm also going to give you a symbolic hard copy of this book, Brian, for you to have. Oh, great. And for you to awesome. you know put wherever you want. But I'm going to sign it, Tammy. You can't read it. But um, Sorry, but I'll I'll, I'll, I'll speak the signature when I. Yes, give you that'd be great. Right? That'd be great. My brother. And let me ask you this question too. So, 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 so what are the props you have here today? The props you have. I got a bunch of props. I'm gonna surprise you. Yeah. I'm gonna right. surprise you. Yes. Are you gonna do it right now? Yeah. Okay. Of course. All right. So we're gonna do a little Ray Charles. I wrote a couple of jokes okay. just for you, Brian. Oh, great, great, great. All right. Here we go. Ray Charles, you ready? Yes. Oh, woman, oh, woman, don't cheat me, show me, and you're the meanest old woman I've never seen. That joke is for you, Brian. Okay. <laughs> I love you, bro. That's great. That's great. Uh, okay. That's Ray Charles. Ray, Ray Charles, Charles, right? Little yeah, Ronnie Dangerfield. Hey, I tell you, it's me, Ronnie. I tell you, boy, was I an ugly kid? Yeah. I tell you, I was so ugly. I had a face like a pepperoni pizza. Yeah. I fell asleep at the library. I woke up, some blind guy was reading my face. I tell you, it ain't easy. <laughs> okay. What do you got? Oh, I love oh, it, that's man. great. That's great. You got a little over personally, you know. I got to tell you, thank you very much. Yeah. I want to just say that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a, a grateful, uh, you know, uh, uh, guest on the uh, BMAC uh, podcast. Yes. And uh, I just want to say that uh, I'd like to sing a little Christmas cheer. What do you got? Yeah, I'd like you to sing along with me. Sure. And I uh, want to sing a little sure. Christmas song. Sure. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, all your troubles will be out. Yes. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Here we are as in olden days. Happy golden days of yore. Faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us once more. Sing it, baby. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, everybody. We're a beautiful audience. Thank you. So what do you got next? The Mac Podcast, man. Don't forget to tune in, baby. Yeah, sure. Thank you. All right. So what do you got next? That's great. Dude, you're the best. Thank you. I appreciate that. A little Jimmy Stewart. A little Jimmy Stewart. Oh, Jimmy Stewart. What do you got here for Jimmy? <clears throat> Jimmy Stewart. I thought, wait just a minute, say. Yeah. Let me, let, me, let me fix my, my hair. Wait just a minute, say. Yeah. My name is Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. You're this sure is the, uh, be, 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 the Be Man podcast. Yes. This is and he's a wonderful kid. Wonderful. He's beautiful. It's a, it's a place where you can wherever a, a, a bell rings. Yeah. A celebrity. Got That's your name. Anyway. <laughs> that wasn't my best Jimmy Stewart, but that was funny. Oh, Brian, I love you, man. That's the best. I never heard that before. You're a screwed little spider potter. That's, That's what you are. He does it better than me. That's right. That's right. Not a boy, not a boy Brian. And Potter would say, George, I ain't no one old man people like me. I don't like them either, so we're even. Foul season, George. George Bailey. Hey, Peter Bailey. Was a no good greedy man. Do it. Sing it. You are a scabby spider, George Bailey. You're worth more dead than alive. It's snowing, Mary. It's, it's snowing, snowing, Mary. Zoo, zoo, spittles. We have a dead Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, old building oh, alone. alone. Happy New Year to you in jail. <laughs> this is the best. Yeah, this really is really. I love you. <laughs> Uh, oh that's, a that's a wonderful life, Barry. It's a great time. It's the best. It's the Merry best. Christmas, crafty Merry old Christmas. house. Merry Christmas, Tony. Well. Again, happy New Year to you. In jail, George. Uh, Ready to turn on the rail. Rail. What are you about calling me Nick? That's my name. What's I got to do? I know someone the Adam's off. My name is Nick. There, George. <laughs> hey, I'm giving up. Wait, I never saw you before in my life. Yeah, before in your life. Why <laughs> <Blind> joke? <laughs> Why joke? Oh, you're the best. 
Oh my god. I never um, saw you before in my life. Shams. How about Robert De Niro? Oh yeah, do Robert De Niro. Niro? Do De Niro. All right, here we go. Do De Niro for you. Robert De Niro. Yeah. Which De Niro? Cape Fear? Where which De Niro? Yet? No, right. which one? Go Rob Bobby Dick. Bobby Dick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you got here? Hey, B Mac. Yeah. What a gift. I got what a gift. gift. I got a gift for you. What's that? What's that gift you think it is? Better have my ice cream. <laughs> Better have my ice cream. B Mac, the ice cream man. Better have my ice cream, B Mac. I'm going to break your legs. I will break your legs. I will put them back together. I will break them again. You hear me? Hey. You hear me? I know you see me. You see me? You hear me? <laughs> I can't take it. Only he is. Uh, you little bit. You got a gift. Got a gift. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> do, you, do, you want, do you have any cocker? You have Joe, Joe cocker? cocker? Yes. Ready? Me and you, right? What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up or walk out on me? Let me all reels and I'll sing you a song. I will try not to sing out of key. Oh, baby, hang back. All I need is my butt hands. I say I'm going to get high. Well. I'm going to get high. get high on you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Dude, you're the best. That's the best, man. See, this is the best podcast I've ever been on. In my I appreciate life. you know. This is good energy right here. It is. It's positive <laughs> energy. Positive energy is what we need in this world, you know? I drove up here and I said, I got a, I got a few jokes for Brian. I know he'll get a kick out of it because he's he, he laughs. At, he's, you know what I love about you, Brian? You can laugh at yourself. Yeah. And that's. You have to. You got to be able to laugh at yourself. Yeah. How about little Donald Trump? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. We got a couple I, Mexican I jokes. I can do them too. Oh, great. Chinese jokes. Right? Nice. I'm ready for those. Believe me, okay? Believe me. We're on the BMAC podcast, okay? Believe okay. me. What do you call a Chinese billionaire? Cha ching, okay? <laughs> Believe, me, okay? <laughs> Believe me. Let me tell you, okay? Why did the Mexican guy throw his wife off the cliff? Why? Tequila, okay? Believe me. No! <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You're the best. Oh, by the way, I, I, I have an impression I want to do it for you if you don't mind. Go ahead, I want to hear it. Ben Crosby singing White Christmas. Oh, uh, sing it. Ready? I sing it with you? Yes. I think I'll leave you lead. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just like the ones I used to know when the treetops glisten and children listen to hear Sleigh bells in the right. snow. Yeah. Wow. I'm okay. dreaming of a white Christmas with every Christmas card I write. May your days be merry and bright. And may all your Christmases be white. No, oh, that's beautiful. Music to my ears. Yep. Huh? How about a little, um, yeah. <clears throat> how about a little, um, yeah. it's the most it's wonderful time of the year. Dong, dong, ding, dong. There'll be much mistletoeing and hearts will be blowing when loved ones are near. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> Hey, hey, we're being festive today. This is the season. Know, right? Just the season. Right? It is, of course. I'm sweating now. Give me fist bump. Give me fist bump. This is, well, <laughs> what, what can I say, man? I mean, I want to do one more for you, if you don't mind. One more yeah, go right ahead, please. You. I want you to do some impressions, too. Okay, great. You know who I can do? Who? Who can you do? I can do. All right. This is, all right. Here's what I can do. You know who I can do when your old buddies? Mark Armstrong. Remember Mark Armstrong? Mark's my friend. I saw, him, I, saw like a brother I saw him the other night. I saw him the other night. He's like my brother. Yeah. So when he he's, sees you, when he sees you, he would say, "He's family." If he would met you, he would say, "Joey, it's Mark. What's up, Joey?" Yeah. It's Mark. Yeah. Uh, you talk about you talk about a, a strapping guy. Mark's a, a very good guy, big yeah. tough guy. Never had to prove himself. No. Nope. And, and you know what? He's kind of kid. Yep. He's he grew up tough, and, and he he's did. a really wonderful guy, and he's great at his job. He's the fire inspector for the Malden Fire Department. You no, know, it's funny. He's actually retiring next year. Good for him. I didn't realize so 35 he was there. years. Oh, 88. He got on in 1988. So it'll be 32 years next year. It'll be 32. He's retiring after 32 yep. years? Yep. Wow. Yep. Good for him. Yep. Mark Armstrong. Oh, and, and, and I can also do, um, do you know Patty Fitzgerald? 
That's my sister, my cousin's wife. I, 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 How do you know her? I've known her for a long time. I, I go to a lot of, um, I, I know her from a lot of all the things. That's, That's my cousin and his wife, Eddie, Eddie Fitz. Fitz. Eddie Fitz. No, my mother and his mother are both mothers. All right. This, <laughs> this is, we were back. Sorry about that. So he's saying about Patty Fitzgerald. I knew no, her my cousin. Long time. Yes. Patty's Eddie. known me since I was a little kid. So when she talks, right, this is how she talks. She, she, she goes, Joey, how are you? It's Patty. Patty's a sweetheart. Yep. Yep. Um, so do you, do you do any persons that nobody else does? Um, how about uh, Boss? You like Boss Cags? Sure. Boss Cags. He was uh, very big in the jazz world. You know what Boss Cags is? Boss Cags was big in the jazz world. He wrote a lot of songs for people you probably didn't realize that he wrote. Okay. Boss Cags was. Uh, I'll give you a song from Boss Cags. Yeah. <clears throat> Babies in a run around, taking with the crowd, but your business in the street talking out loud, saying you bought this man. How much you done spent? I swear she must believe it's all the limits of ten. Hey, you better bring the chick around. There's a sad old truth that it all down. Nice. I wonder, 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 wonder. Ooh. Not a how to talk like that. Boss Gags. Boss Gags. That's the best. Al Green, little Al Green? Yeah, Al Green. The Reverend Al Green. Al Green. Ah. I'm so in love with you. Sing it, baby. Yeah. Whatever you want to do is all right with me. Because you make me feel so bad. And I want to spend my life with you. Sing it, baby. Ready? Let me sing the sands, baby. Since we've been together, mm, loving you forever is all what I need. Let me be the one you can run me to. I'll never be. We all to stay together, loving you weather, weather. And I'm a good or bad, happy or sad. Ooh. Oh, oh, actually, yeah, I forgot. I've got that one. Remember that one? Go. Oh, 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 come on, Joey. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. keep away from the road around the zoo. Hey, oh, there's a business that's mine on the base. Time to put down in this girl's woman's brain. So if you don't want to cry like I do, uh, keep away from the road around the zoo. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's been a great podcast. You guys have been great. Joey, yep. we, this has been an absolute blast. Thank you, you know, Brian. I mean, this is I'm sweating now after that whole thing. It's pleasure's all mine, my brother. Been, it's been it's been a blast. And uh um, Rod Stewart, you ready? Yes. Rod Stewart, yes. Rod Stewart, yes. Wake up back and I'll think about something to say to you. It's late right. September, I really should be back at school. Ready? Have I told you lately that I love you? Yeah. Have I told you there's no one else but you? Fill my heart with gladness, take away my sadness. Ease my troubles, that's what you do. Rod Stewart, baby. Rod Stewart, baby. That's the best. Rod Stewart, Rod Stewart. Oh, can you look up the book real quick? I mean, yeah. I can't see the book, but I've always been seeing Good it, so. things are supposed to happen to you. You can get it at Amazon.com. Yep. You can get an autographed copy from me. I'll personalize it. Oh, great. Right. Uh, JoeyVoices.com. Okay, yes. this is the front of the book. This is the back of the book. Back of the book. Okay. Yes. And uh, Rico Petroselli, Red Sox legend. Yes. Wrote the foreword for this book. He's a oh, wonderful I, I guy. You get there, you read the foreword of this book, you're gonna love it. But this book's gonna really help you. I got people messaging me with testimonials telling me they're on their second pass of this book. It's not a really thick book. Thick book. It's about a two-hour read, mm -hmm. and I wrote it that way on purpose. Because a lot of people in this day and age have a really short attention span because of 
all of the technology and everything at your fingertips. Yeah. There's just a lot of people that just that that would love to read a book, yeah. but they just don't want to sit down and read a thick book. And when they do, they'll read a couple chapters, put it down, and never pick it up again. I know that because I'm that kind of a person. So I wrote this book with that in mind. You read this book, you sit down for a couple hours. I guarantee you, you will be a different person. So if you apply the principles in this book that I I lay out, you'll be a different person. You'll be wiser. And you'll be a happier person because it teaches you how to be happy again. So, so control of your life. So my question is, I question. So is this book? Is this more? Is this more of your life story, or is it more of? A, of no, I stuff? tell some stories. Person, I personalize it. I apply it to myself, like certain things that I talk about in here. Yeah. I use myself as an example of why those things that I talk about are true. Oh. Principles are true, and I apply it to my own life. Uh, but you know, my. Um, Story of my whole life, my, my, my biography, yes. hasn't been written yet, and I, I haven't written it yet because I'm, I'm not ready to write it yet. Ready but yet. I already know what the title is going to be, yep. and uh, and I want it to be inspirational. And the reason I haven't written it yet is because my story isn't over yet. Mm. You know, and the, and the best part of the book is the ending, right? And yeah. Exactly. My story's not done yet, so I'm not ready to write my biography. Right. So, right. I'll tell you what, though. I'm, Someday. I'm, yeah, I'm definitely going to get this audio book for sure. The book that just came out, I want to get this audio book for sure. Okay. And um, you said Jordan Rich narrates it, you said? Jordan Rich is going to narrate it. We've, we've already been talking the other day. He's already got the manuscript. He's looking it over, and he wants me to do a, a, a brief audio introduction of it. Oh, and, uh, you know, just it's it's going to be really, really professionally done, and awesome. it's going to really be cool. And, and Jordan Rich is a sweet guy, yeah. and he's a heck of a talent. Awesome. That's going to be great. It's going to be Thank wonderful. You. Thank, Thank you. you. My second book is coming out in uh, January, February. Oh, yeah. That book is called Pretend to Be What You Intend to Be. Ooh, I like that. The Art of Visualization. Mm. And there's also 50 Points of Light, Life Principles that I put in there as well that people can go over and it will help them with their life. So it's a really good, good read. And I'm actually uh, achieving and manifesting uh, the things that have been in my mind, my goals, my dreams, they're slowly manifesting. This finally became a reality. Yeah. Johnny Arsenal is my UPS guy. Oh, I know Johnny Arsenal. Oh. So Johnny Arsenal hey, shows up one day, yep. and, and, and I was up in the window, and I was actually writing yeah. on the computer, and he, he pulls up. I hear the UPS truck pull up, and he says, Joey! So I come running downstairs, and and, he, and he's, got a, he's got a bunch of boxes with my name on it. He goes, what the heck is this? I open up the box, and I say, Johnny... I says, today is the day that I've become officially a published author, and you get the first book. I open it up, and he goes, sign it to my wife. So I signed it to his wife, Rhonda, and I gave it to him. And he wow. yelled it up, took a picture. And I always share that picture because he was like the first guy. And I grew up with John, my brother. Oh, yeah. Very good friends. Yep, Debbie, Rhonda. Yeah, yeah. Debbie, yep. Yeah. The whole family, great yep. family. And Joey, yep. and brother Joey, too. Yep, Joey, too. Uh, but anyway, you can get that book on Amazon.com. Yes. This book here and my oh, other books that are going to be coming out. And I will be back on the PMAC podcast. In of, the course, of course. Of course. Because Brian's my friend and I love him very much. Of course, man. He's a celebrity. Thank you, man. I appreciate, I appreciate you it's saying that. It's the truth. It's the truth. Thanks, man. I always say, the squeaker wheel gets the grease. Yeah. And the answer is always no if you never ask. Ask. And, you know, the extra mile is never crowded. And Brian understands that principle. He goes after everything he wants. Yeah, yeah. And and it, it, there's such a thing as it's called polite persistence. Mm. Polite persistence will get you everywhere. Yep. So, exactly. Brian, I love you, man. And uh, remember brother. something. Um, yeah. If you take life too seriously, yeah, all you're doing is creating a life that you have to take too seriously. That's true. So keep it light. Awesome. Keep it balanced. I'm going to leave you with this final note. Yeah. It's not the minutes at the dinner table that make you fat. It's the seconds. Yo. Okay. Got you. Yeah, okay. Okay. I love you, man. Okay, brother. God bless you. God bless you your family. Podcast, guys. Yes, you too, man. Appreciate Merry Christmas to you, brother. You too, man. And, uh, and uh, God bless your home and your family. You too, brother. And, uh, Thanks, guys. See you guys around the show, and uh, see you guys next week.